God, I need a new table. Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Now, this one's taken longer than what we would have liked. Uh, quite frankly, it's all your fault because people seem to keep on buying these before we can get them reviewed. I've lost about three Review 220s at this moment in time. We're now on the fourth. Fingers crossed this one stays with us long enough to get the filming done. Uh, this one, or with this review, you might notice some slight continuity uh, issues, and the reason for that is because past Dan has already filmed a fair bit of this with a 2.2. This, as you can probably see, is a 177. So you're going to notice maybe a couple little differences between the, the rifle bend and the rifle here, but we'll let you know more or less when that's going to happen. So here we have the Cometa 220, and I know a lot of guys are saying it's about time you're looking at this, and I will admit, forgive me viewers, I have sinned. Uh, we did skip past this one when we first started with Cometa. We went straight to the from the 100 to then the 300 and the Fenixes. Simply put, when I first started trading with them, my first thoughts were it's a bit too similar to a Cometa 100. We'll come back and uh, see what we think of it later on. Well, thankfully, we do have one now. And after the feedback we've had from people that have actually bought these, well, I've, I should have looked at it sooner, is all I'm going to say. But we'll find out how good it is for ourselves a bit later on. So. We've got the Cometa 220 Compact in front of us now, and let's talk about the features and what you get with your gun. Okay, so features, what do you get for your money? Now, we've got a couple interesting things with this gun, but we'll start off with what you usually get on an air gun. You've got a rubber recoil pad back here. Slightly further along, you have got your slightly raised cheek piece. Now, it is more right-handed friendly than left. Hopefully, you can see it's mainly flat on the right-hand side, but we have had left-handed shooters shoot these with very little problem. But like I said, just bear in mind, it is ideally a right-handed gun. You have a metal trigger blade, which you wouldn't really expect if when you think that the, uh, the higher-end Cometas come with plastic, but you do have metal there and a metal trigger guard to go with it. Slightly further up, you have got Cometas rather lovely automatic safety up there. We'll talk a bit more about that with the handling section. Slightly further along, unfortunately, I will say you don't get the Conus Pro 3 number 32 AO on there with the gun. However, if interested, get in touch with us and we'll see what we can do for you. I really do recommend these little scopes for guns like these as well. They're cracking little bits of kit. Slightly further along, we have got the fiber optic sights. Now, this is where things get interesting. As you can see, you've got your sights glowing away here. However, what Cometa have done, you can see the fiber optic insert here on the end of the barrel, or silencer, I should say. You can probably see they've fitted it inside the silencer. Now, I think that's an absolutely brilliant idea, and I wish some of the other gun manufacturers and such would do that instead of doing what they have been doing and we've been ranting about, putting a glob of plastic on the end just to fit a little fiber optic insert. Do it this way. This is the ultimate way of doing it if you want fiber optic sights. That silencer is also all metal, by the way, which again is the absolute cherry on top of the cake. Spot on. As we come back slightly, this does have the cold hammer forged barrel that you also get with the, obviously, the fusions, the PCPs, you name it, from Cometa. Great bit of kit, and the fact you get that on a sub 200 pound gun, I think, is absolutely stonking. And on top of that, you also get a lifetime warranty through us with the Cometa rifles. So it's not just a gun for a couple of years, this will be yet another gun for life. But there's no use having a gun for life if it's too heavy and you can't shoulder it. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case for this. But let's get in touch now with past Dan and see how heavy it is. Okay, so she's on the scales and she comes out at a predictably very low 5.66 pounds. So it's easy to say that this little rifle could be enjoyed by pretty much everyone. Well, at least on the scales it does, it could be a completely different animal when it's put to the shoulder. So let's chuck a little compact scope on there, put it to the shoulder and see what we think. Okay, so handling, what do we think of the Cometa compact carbine? Yep, I've got that more or less right. It says compact on there anyway, and I know it's a carbine, so I'm taking that as a win. Um, yeah, it's pretty much what past Dan probably told you. It's absolutely light as a feather. I mean, you can wiggle it around pretty much with one day, one day, one hand, all day long. And there is a joke to be made there, but uh, I'm not uh, cocky enough, shall we say, to make it. Sorry, moving back to the gun, couldn't resist. Um, yeah, handling wise, it's pretty much light as a feather, even with this little scope on there. And like I said, it's not the biggest scope on the planet, a little three number 32. But for this gun, I think that is absolutely the perfect size and perfect scope. Nice little ultra fine duplex reticle on there. Proper old school little brake barrel spring gun. I'm basically in heaven at this moment in time. I like the PCPs -ish, to an extent, kind of, but this is me. 
absolutely 100%. Uh, I mean, we'll see, it might shoot like an absolute dog, but I would rather shoot this. This is me personally, than most of the PCPs I've ever shot in my life. But I'm saying that, and I haven't even put a shot through it yet. So let's do that. It might kick like an absolute mule because there's no weight at all. As most people know, the heavier the Springer is, the more unwieldy it is, but also the less recoil you're gonna experience. So first things first, before you can take a shot, you've got the automatic safety at the rear. Possibly the best automatic safety on the market, simply because of how, one, the quality of how it's been made. It is a piece of metal. It's not a lump of plastic or anything like that. And disengage is easy, re-engages very easily. It's not like, again, I don't mean to keep picking on them, but it's not like, say, the Virox. And again, I've got one, so don't torches and pitchforks come my way to kill me. Um, it's not like the Virox where you have to reach around, switch it off like so and then say you're aiming at a rabbit, and it will happen. The rabbit will get spooked by something. You don't know how long you're gonna be sat there for with a live rifle. So you've got to potentially re-cock the rifle all over again. And again, bearing in mind you've been sat there deadly still and quiet for potentially upwards of an hour, maybe even beyond that. You don't really wanna move and then rustle the leaves and scare everything else away. With this, it is literally just, and that's it. Right then, so, switch her off. Let's have a go at recoil and trigger. Let's see what we think. Don't know why I'm taking aim. The scope is not zeroed in. Right, trigger, a little creepy. Second stage, you might have seen that. You got a very light first stage and then we had a bit of movement till it finally broke. What I'm really impressed with though, we'll do that again so you can have a better look. Did you notice that it barely kicked at all despite the fact that there's no weight there? Watch this. Right, and so, a fairly cheapo pellet, so I've got to thumb them in a bit. There we go, so nice solid lock up as well when you return that, like the rest of the Kometa, uh, the, uh, Kometa range. So switch that off. Right, so we'll do a little finger, hopefully you can see that, my little pinky. So first stage, nice and light, bouncing off second, but she's a little creepy as you can see. And then she breaks. What I will say though, out of, I'm only taking two shots, so take this with a pinch of salt. It does feel quite predictable at least. It seemed to break in pretty much the exact same area as uh, what it did the first time. Um, Again, the reason why I say that is because some of the budget guns on the market that are similar-ish price to this, like the pest controllers and XS19s, depending on where you look, and the 208s, and to an extent, even the XS20, they can be a little unpredictable. And with the case of the, the 19 and the pest controller, the trigger can be a little mushy. Now, I'm not knocking the guns. In fact, I rave about them. I'm a massive fan of the pest controllers and 19s. But with this, it's just that little bit nicer feeling. So switch that off. So like, like I said, Second stage, creep, and I can already tell you this is where it's gonna break. See that? Off she goes. You can get used to that, and again, it is an adjustable unit, so you can have a little play with it and probably set that a bit lighter and such, and just make it a bit of a sweeter trigger. We'll have a little go, maybe before it gets to the accuracy section. Now the bit that I'm really impressed about, oh, I wish you had smell-o-vision. You got that diesel-y, lovely smell. It's almost a bit like a barbecue. It's absolutely gorgeous coming from this gun. So you PCP boys, you don't get that. You don't know what you're missing out on. All right, switch that off. What I want you to look at, I'm not even gonna hold it in my hand. I'm not even gonna artillery hold it. I'm just gonna rest it on one finger. Watch this. All right, now I'm gonna lean back, so hopefully you can see that, the end of the silencer. You tell me how much kick you see. How bloody nice was that? Let's do that one more time. That, from what I'm looking at, and like I said, it's resting on a finger, bear in mind, it's not being palmed or anything like that. In my view, that scope, or that reticle, is barely moving at all. I would not be surprised if at range, you can see that pellet traveling like a PCP. So let's give that another go. So as you can see, just resting on the index finger. Let's give that a go. Almost nothing there. That is a beautifully set up little gun. In fact, if I get bad accuracy today, I can't really blame the gun. And the real shame is I can't even blame the weather. It's beautiful today, unfortunately. Um, I have to come up with something else. Uh, sun's in my eyes, it's too nice. Um, that'll do. Yeah, overall handling wise, that is an absolutely beautiful little gun. But there is also a slight doubt as to its power because it might only have such little recoil because of obviously the, the light weight. You'd expect that to kick a hell of a lot more because it's only doing, say, five foot pounds. So let's whack the chronograph out. And let's take a cheeky peek. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. One last little thing I just wanna show you. You know what some people do where they uh, have their highly tuned 
spring guns and they put a pellet say on the breech here or something like that and they show you through the shot cycle that the uh, the pellet hasn't moved and obviously it means it's a really nice smooth shot cycle just to hammer the point home how smooth this little gun is i'm actually going to make it even worse i'm going to put the pellet on the rounded part of the action right above the spring and you watch this and put it in a safe area see if you see that pellet move or fall off there we go. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Beat that. Okay then, so we are now gonna do one more accuracy test because do you remember, I believe early on in the video, I said something along the lines of this rifle is so light and kicks so little that you could easily hunt freestanding with it. It'd be the ideal vermin gun and things like that on the move, um, walked up style shooting. Well, I haven't had really much of a chance to embarrass myself yet. And well, not any more than what I usually do per episode. So I thought, why don't we put some of these little caps on these stones down here. We'll put three of them down and let's see if we can get all three of them. We're only going to have three pellets, so we've only got one chance per, uh, per cap. And let's see if we can get them, say, 30-ish yards back there. I'll be standing as far back as I can while still being able to see the, uh, the stones. And again, you might notice they're moved a little bit when we actually start filming. And let's see if we can get them freestanding, on camera, no fast forward, nothing like that. And I'll do it so as you can actually see me stood there shooting towards you. Scary thought, isn't it? Actually, it's probably me shooting towards you. It's probably the safest place to be. Is probably in front of me if you've seen my shooting on this channel. Um, the target is, you can see the caps behind the 5P piece there. The 5P is a little bit smaller than the cap. So you're probably talking, I think a rough guess, 20 pence. You'd pretty much be there. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge, but I think that little Cometa 220 is so good that even I can hit these caps standing up. So let's set them up and let's find out.
Okay, so the Cometa 220 compact review, what do we think? I'm a massive, massive fan because it makes me feel like a big kid again. And on top of that, downrange, it absolutely does the business. Saying that though, we always start with the negatives, don't we? No gun is perfect. I don't care if it's a Daystate, FX, Fire Arc, Anschutz, what have you, or Fiendwork Bow, you name it. I will find a fault with that gun, the same way that I have found faults with this gun. First thing I'm going to mention is the power is not full. Now, don't get me wrong, the 220 never really pretended to be a full power gun. And I will also say the 22s are what I've noticed more powerful than the 177s. The 22s are usually around 10 ish feet pound, even out of the box sometimes. The 177s are more around the 8, 9 feet pound area. That being said, you can see it's the second chronograph test we did using, hopefully, you can see at the top there the FX pellets. Very good reason for that. Used all these with the accuracy testing. So no super field that time. But yeah, um, we use the FX pellets. You can see the power has settled to around 8.2-ish feet pound, but the most impressive bit is the spread has actually halved. You might notice it was dieseling a bit, and it's still blowing a bit of smoke now as well. It was dieseling a bit, and we had the occasional low shot, high shot, things like that the first time. But you can see it sorts itself out really nicely. The other thing I'm going to mention, this isn't a negative of such, but it is a room for improvement, Cometa, if you're listening. The trigger on this, the second stage, is a bit creepy. Hopefully you could see that in the um, handling section, what we did. I have adjusted the trigger since, simply with that screw that you can, um, hopefully you might have been able to see behind the trigger blade. In fact, you can see the little hole in the trigger guard there where you adjust it, hopefully. A little bit awkward to show you that. Apologies if the, ca uh, the camera angle sorry, is a bit wrong. The light was shining right on the screen. I couldn't see a damn thing. I don't have a clue what I just showed you then. I apologize if it's anything I shouldn't have done. <laughs> you don't know this channel. Um, but yeah, the trigger could do with a little bit of crisping up. That second stage creeps a bit too much. If you crisp that up, what a little gun this would be. I would even go as far as to say, we're getting into the positives now. This might seem blasphemy to some because there are certain people out there that just want maximum power no matter what it is. Accuracy is always more important than power, and that is what I love about this little gun. I wouldn't even raise the power on this in 177. It is so smooth to shoot. It is like shooting a PCP, and it's got more than enough power to hunt out to 30-ish yards, give or take, not a problem at all. At the end of the day, you're firing this, and you're gonna have to hit the right spot no matter what power you're doing. And this will easily get the job done out to that range. Might not push it much further than that, admittedly, but 30 yards, no problem. And again, for hunting with springers, I know we've got the occasional guy out there that will say he shot a rabbit at 183 yards the other day. For typical hunting ranges, at least in my experience and the people I speak to, 30 yards with a spring gun is pretty good. It's about average where you want to be. So for hunting, 100% I would still recommend this gun. The other thing I love about this little rifle is the build quality on it as well. You can see there, the bluing on it is really nice. The trigger is metal, the trigger guard is metal, you've got a nice little recoil pad on the back, but the bit that I love the most that shows that Cometa is really listening, where the other guys really do need to pick up their game, is this. That, as we've already said, is an all metal silencer, and it's on there, one, it's a cocking aid, but to be fair, a child will cock this gun easy enough, no matter what, it, even if it wasn't even there. But two, it's a great way to put that fiber optic sight on there. And I really like the way that they've done that. And you can see the rear set here glowing away as well. You've not got a lump of plastic on the end or a funnel cometa. If you can fit this silencer on all the guns, you give me the, the standard, um, the Fenix, the, uh, the 300, put that silencer on those. Trust me, I'm, I'm happy as a pig in, you know what, I'm not gonna go there just yet. But yeah, build-wise, it's an amazing little gun. Accuracy-wise, I knew it was gonna be good. It's got that cold hammer forged barrel on there, which most people will tell you that's had the Cometas. They're a stonking bit of kit. And as you can see here, you've got on the left, pretty much five pence group. On the right, even with the low shot, watch this. Five pence group. In fact, if we get that out of the way, let me, let me try something. Little finger now. It's a bit bigger, but it's not much bigger for a spring gun. That's not bad. And even with the budget pellets on the right here, you can see it's pretty good. Now, again, you, like I said, you've seen this already. And obviously you've seen the, um, when we did the accuracy testing with the group of pellets we did before. And it was genuinely, it was an accurate little gun. Most of the pellets group very, very well. Only one or two that was a bit all over the place. But then to be fair, I mean, I think we got lucky with the, uh, the SMKs on the uh, Reximex review. I don't suppose lightning can strike twice. Then, as you know, we move these little rubber button things to, I think we stepped it 30 yards. And as you can see, that was freestanding. You might be able to just about make out the pellet impact at the 12 o'clock position there. 
I couldn't find the other one. We got two out of three, and as we said, we're only going to use one pellet per shot. I'm not going to do take after take. We're going to do it there and then. And you can see there, we got two hits and one miss, which I'm more than happy to say was probably me. You can see the little gun can do the business. It's just the fleshy bit that's pulling the trigger that let it down. And considering that I don't shoot like that, I've never really practiced freestanding shooting. I'm always an elbows on the knees kind of guy. That I'm very, very happy with. I'll put it that way. I'm not complaining. You can probably sense behind the camera I'm still smiling about that result. It's a great little gun. It really is. Couple of little niggles, like we said, but it is mainly a niggle more than anything else. And again, if you wanted more power, get a 2.2. Simple as, they're usually about 10-ish feet pound. You're laughing. But, and again, lifetime warranty as well. You can't complain, can you? It's just a great, well-made little bit of kit and stupid good fun. But thanks ever so much for watching. I'm not going to drag this review on any longer. It's taken long enough to make. I don't want to drain more of your life away just having to watch it. Thanks ever so much for watching. We will get the next gun reviewed much, much quicker. Make no mistake about that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.